You'll have to forgive me. I knew this process was going to be difficult, and I was willing to do it alone, but I was glad I didn't have to. Going through the rooms with the memories they evoked wore on me and raised that guilt again. Having Aurora and Sarah there helped, but once I found my old telescope, the one I used the entire time I was here, the one I deliberately left behind as my assurance that I would return, I broke down. I considered giving the telescope away, but Sarah and Aurora both stopped me told me to use it, to remember why we were there, not just to take care of what remained of the estate, but to raise money so that others would have the care they needed to prevent what happened. I knew they were right. I just have to ride this pain out. Ride. Yes, that would help a lot. So I suggested that we take a trip up to Jasper. I knew of a good place I could use the telescope, and it was the only time of the year when it would be halfway possible anyway. So I checked in the address book my mother kept by the phone and called my cousin, Brian Orson. He is the son of my mother's elder brother. I had not seen him since I left. I rarely saw him when I was here as it was. I just had to hope he was home. Brian, it's Stargazer. Oh, hi, Star. How have you been? Not well, I'm afraid. You, of course, heard about my mother. Indeed I did. I sent flowers to the funeral. I don't know if you saw. <sighs> I just wish there was something more we could have done. Me too. I was wondering, would it be all right if I brought the whole family up to visit? I need a few days away from Calgary. Of course, Star. I've always got rooms ready for family. When did you want to come by? As soon as we could. Actually, it's more than just family. Have you heard about the concert we're having down here? Yeah, it got announced a few days ago. Why do you ask? Well, there are seven of us. Myself and Sarah, Dipper, Aurora and Dan, Bert, the third of our singing group, and Bobby, who is a friend of Dipper's. Got it. I'm sure I can make room for all of you. Is there anything else you might need that I can get you ahead of time? Yes. Could you check to see if they still have a horse rental at the tramway? I was thinking of riding up to Whistler's Peak. No problem. I can check that as soon as I get off the phone with you. I should have what information you need by the time you get here. All right. We'll be arriving tomorrow afternoon, then. The drive was long and rather boring, unless you are a geologist. The closer we got to Jasper, the further down the mountains the snow seemed to start. We arrived around three in the afternoon. Jasper is not that big of a town, and we arrived during their peak tourist season. They get a lot of Asians visiting, so most of the hotels were already full. Brian, however, worked there as a tourist director, specializing in those wishing to visit the wild wolf tribes. He had information that showed one place near the hot springs that had a couple of rooms available for a short while. So we put my sister's family and Bobby in that room, while Sarah, Birch, and I took the other. Once we were settled, we took some time to get caught up with Brian. Oh, something I guess I ought to explain before I go further. Both the Orson and Draper family lines are of the chromata type. Our fur often reflects our inner nature. Brian is often mistaken for a polar bear, but his fur is actually a very light gray, since he has always been interested in the wolf tribes of Canada. So, Star tells me that you work with the tribes here. Are there a lot of people that are interested in seeing them? You know it. Asians seem especially fascinated with them, and I often have to correct the stereotypical image they have of them to ensure that they don't embarrass themselves when they get there. Embarrass? Well... One group of Japanese tourists were convinced that they howled at the moon every night and wanted to plan their trip for the full moon in order to get pictures of that. The group even gathered together in the evening beforehand to practice their howling so they could join in. It took me some doing to explain that traditional howls are only done on ceremonial days and are only a small part of their actual ceremony. I remember last year in Wyoming we came across a wolf chief. I remember learning a lot about the wolf tribes there, too. Well, the traditions of the wolf tribes vary from one to the next up here. Because the winters are so harsh, they will usually migrate south and out of the mountains. In fact, most of the town pretty much closes down in the winter, with only a few still here to take care of things. I'm one of the few that sticks around, which is why I eventually became a tour director, 
since I know a bit of everything. By the way, sir, I'm curious. How exactly do the hot springs around here stay so hot, even when the temperatures are freezing? Well, you said you were in Wyoming last year, right? Did you stop by Yellowstone? Yeah, we did. It was nice there, too. So I assume you saw the geysers there and felt the heat from them? Yes, sir. Well, there's a geological formation deep below ground that collects water. Down that far is actually very warm, which is typical of mountainous regions. The water eventually is forced up by the steam pressure through several openings in the rock. Since the water continually rises up, it is constantly replenished and the spring stays hot. That's kind of cool, actually. Isn't it, Dipper? No, it isn't, Bobby. It's hot! <laughs> Brian verified that there was still a horse rental, but we needed to hire a guide who would not only help find the way to the peak, but would care for the horses. All I had to do was find out how many we needed. I asked Aurora and Dan, and while Dan thought he might want to, Aurora said absolutely not, which didn't surprise me. I had already suggested that Sarah stay behind, but she wanted to make sure I would be all right. Fortunately, Birch was there. Sarah, don't worry. I'll go with him and keep him out of trouble. I'd kind of like to go, just for the experience anyway. Might be inspirational. Birch, have you ever ridden a horse? Nope. But how hard can it be? I checked with Dipper and Bobby, who at first wanted to come, but when I told them that the nights were down below freezing and they would be intense on a thin mattress inside of sleeping bags... Boys, I think you'd better stay here. Especially you, Dipper. You have to sing. Ah, She's got a point, Dipper. It's best not to risk any trouble since you have to perform. Besides, think about the view of the sky we're going to have from the hot springs. Well, if the view is so good, how come Uncle Star isn't going there, huh? He sees the stars in the sky every night, but he hasn't been to Canada in years. And this gives him the chance to see things he hasn't seen in a while. Dipper, I'm going up there for more than just a good view. I went up there several times when I lived around here. It's... Well, let's call it therapeutic. Well, okay. Don't go ruining your voice, though. Or you either, Birch. I don't want to have to do the concert by myself. Yeah, the last thing we need is to fuel Dipper's ego again. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> oh, come on. You know I'm kidding. So I spoke with the horse guide, told him what I was bringing, and he said that four horses should be plenty. Early the next morning, Birch and I took the van up to the base of the tramway where the horse rental was. We spent the next hour getting to know our guide, who was actually a member of the Wolf Tribe and had made the trip many times. We put the gear on the scales to balance it out. The telescope had to be removed from the case, of course, which reduced the weight tremendously. With the mirror tube on one side and the stand on the other, along with our tent, pads, and sleeping bags, we were pretty well set. Birch and I both went out to get parkas. I had forgotten to bring mine, as I didn't think I would need it, and Birch, well, poor Birch had been shivering at night since we got here. You'd think growing up in Colorado, he'd know what mountain nights are like, but apparently he had forgotten. Then it came time for us to mount and head out. So you just put your foot in the stirrup and then swing your leg over to the other side. Relax, Star. I think I can do this by myself. Oh! Birch, are you all right? Yeah, um, <clears throat> could you show me how to do that again? We did eventually get Birch up in the saddle, and he asked a lot of questions about how to steer. Our guide simply told him to hold the reins and do nothing. The horse was trained to follow the lead. Once I had mounted, our guide tied the pack horse to his own, mounted, and we were off. Up in a meadow near Jasper, Alberta Two bears and four ponies on a long, lonesome ride To see the high country and learn of her people The ways that they live there, the ways that they die Should have.